Hey guys, Daniel here. Before we get to the video, I just wanted to let you all know I have a discount code for select EVGA products, such as graphics cards and motherboards. When you click the link in the description of any of my videos, my associate code is applied to your card upon checkout. If you do purchase something using my code, I do receive a little commission. Click the link in the description to learn more. What's up everybody, Daniel here. Welcome back for a brand new video. Today, I'm gonna show you how and why you should test boot all of your PC components outside of the case before you get everything built, just so you know if you have a bad part. If at any point you enjoyed the video or if you found it helpful, be sure to hit the like button. It really does help me out. Also, if you want to see more videos as they're uploaded, be sure to hit the subscribe button and turn on notifications so you never miss another upload. Without further ado, let's get into it. So as stated in the intro, we're going to be testing some PC components before you get them built into a system. Now we're not going to be building a PC, we're simply going to be testing some components. The parts that need to be tested are a new or technically used CPU that I just purchased. This is the Ryzen 5 1600 AF. We have a kit of RAM, a 16 gigabyte kit of RAM that I purchased a while ago on Facebook Marketplace. And a, we're actually going to be testing two separate power supplies that I purchased also on Facebook Marketplace. So let's get into this. We all know how to install a Ryzen CPU by now. If not, here is a quick guide. So you have this little metal arm here on your motherboard. You simply push it towards the bottom of the motherboard and just lift up towards your RAM slots. And you want to line up this golden triangle here with this triangle in the corner of the motherboard. Another easy way is to line up the Ryzen text here with the top of the socket here. Just simply drop that into place. Make sure it's sitting flush. Lower your arm. Ryzen CPU is installed. RAM, another easy install here. Simply pull it out of the packaging. When installing your RAM, you're going to be installing in the farthest right slot, then you're going to skip one, then you're going to install it in the next slot. And on some motherboards, you'll see, oops, sorry, I hit the camera. On some motherboards, you'll see, it even says first on slots B2 and A2, and it says first here. On this particular motherboard, we have two clips on either side of the RAM slot. Sometimes you will only have one on the top. In this case, we have two on either side, so I'm just gonna knock both of these clips back in preparation for installing our RAM. Now, when installing RAM, you have this little keyway here. You're going to line that up with the notch that's in the motherboard or the key that's in the motherboard, and they are all aligned on the motherboard, so the RAM slots will always be facing the same direction, or sorry, the RAM sticks will always be facing the same direction. So once you get those two things lined up, simply press down firmly and you will hear two firm clicks on either side. Get your second RAM stick out of the package. Once again, line it up with the slot or the notch on the motherboard. Press down firmly. And boom, you're installed. RAM is installed. Now we want to put our CPU cooler on. Luckily, the person I bought this off of never used the stock cooler, so I still have a fresh bit of thermal paste on there that we're going to take advantage of. So in this case, you can install the cooler either with the AMD text facing to the left by the VRM heatsink or to the right by your RAM slots. Sometimes you won't be able to do this depending on if you have a fourth stick of RAM in here because you would see it would just barely interfere depending on how thick your heat spreaders are for your RAM sticks. So we're just gonna go ahead and turn it to the left, line it up with the screw holes of the AMD backplate, get your Phillips head screwdriver and just tighten down the screws in an opposing star pattern. So if you start here, skip over either of these two corners, go straight diagonal across, go to this screw, then go to this screw, then lastly end here, but you want to tighten uh, evenly screw by screw. So here we'll do one here, I'll try not to shake the camera because it is mounted to the table. 
So get one started. Come over to the top. You'll have to press firmly down sometimes, not all the time, but sometimes, on, especially on this particular one. Got to press down so you can compress the spring that's on the cooler so you can get those threads started. Move over to the next one. You'll hear that spring compressing. Sorry for that noise there. Come here to the last one just to get it started. Alright, all screws are started so we can then tighten evenly going to all four screws. When you're tightening the screws, you pretty much just want to get them until they stop turning. You don't want to over torque them by any means. Once you get them to the point where they just stop turning, that's perfectly tight. Then you want to take your CPU fan header and connect that to the CPU fan header on your motherboard. You have that tab, or sorry, this keyway on your connector needs to line up with that tab there on your motherboard. Let's see if we can get a better angle. There we go. Connect it, and you can hide your fan connector or your fan cable any way you can. We're not going to really care because this isn't going in a system. Okay, if you have a storage drive, you would connect that now. I don't currently have a storage drive that I can test, but Really, what we're just trying to test is to make sure that the CPU will boot to the BIOS with a graphics card and RAM installed. In order to boot a system, um, if the CPU does not have integrated graphics, which most all AMD CPUs do not have, a, have integrated graphics built into the CPU, you will need a graphics card, obviously a motherboard, a CPU, again obviously, RAM, at least one stick of RAM, that needs to be installed in either of these two slots that we originally stated and a graphics card and obviously a power supply as well. So I'm going to get the graphics card and a power supply. Here's our graphics card. This is the EVGA RTX 2070 Super Black Edition from my sim racing PC build. In order to install a graphics card you simply have to just press down on this tab here. We're going to use the slot in the motherboard box as our PCIe slot, or sorry, PCI bracket slot. You're going to line up this keyway here with the notch that's in the PCIe slot. really can only go in one way. You'll hear a nice firm click and you are installed. Okay, the two power supplies I'm going to be testing are the EVGA Supernova 750G3 and the 750G Plus. Looks like the 750G Plus is a little beefier in terms of the stuff that you can connect. Both are 750 watts, 80 plus gold efficiency rated. As you can see here, Here we're comparing the connectors coming off of the power supplies. It looks like obviously the 750G Plus is a little beefier in terms of all the things you can connect. We have up to one, two, three, four, five SATA connectors, one, two, three, four graphics, graphics card connectors, obviously the 24 pin motherboard connector here, and up to two CPU power cables. On the 750G3, we have just the motherboard connector here, the 24 pin ATX cable. We also have another um, two CPU power cables here. We have, again, up to four graphics card connectors here, and only four SATA cables or SATA connectors here. So it looks like the only thing we're missing is just a fifth. Uh, SATA connector. <laughs> really, I thought there were actually more differences than that, but that's the only difference is just one SATA connector. So we'll go ahead and test the bigger one first. So we'll only need three cables coming off of the power supply to in order to test in this in this scenario. 
we have our graphics card power connector. This is going to be one of the kinds that you can daisy chain. So both of these will go to the graphics card. One end will go to the power supply, obviously. This is the CPU power cable. We only have one eight pin connector on the motherboard, so this will be plenty. And obviously our 24 pin motherboard power connector. So I'm gonna get this connected. You'll see it completely connected here in just a second. Okay, we're ready to do our test boot. We have our CPU power connector over here. Motherboard power is over here. And we have our graphics card power here. Our power supply is obviously connected to power as well, but the switch is currently turned off. The easiest way to turn a PC on without a power button is to jump the front panel header for the power button using a screwdriver or any metal tool that you have close by. I'll take a nice detailed picture of the front panel header to show you which two pins I'm touching, but it's the top right two pins on the top row of the header. So I gotta first turn on the power switch on the power supply, and then we're ready to do our boot. Oh, I missed. There we go. Wasn't touching it well enough on the contacts. So the thing with AMD CPUs, you may notice it will do a couple of boot cycles. It's just training the memory to the system. I'm gonna move the camera here so we can watch the display. Oh, I don't have a graphics card connected, or sorry, a display cable connected. Let's see if by simply connecting a display cable. Do we get anything? We do not. I'm going to power down the system just by hitting the switch on the power supply. We're going to try this again. Give it a couple seconds just to power everything down. I'm actually going to touch the power cable, or sorry, the power connector header, the power button header to drain any residual power. hit the power switch again. This time we actually do have a display cable plugged in. And one more time. There we go. Must not be getting good contact when I initially try to touch the power connectors. So I'm going to bring the camera back up. Looks like we already got a post, which is a good sign. You may notice with AMD CPUs that it boots a couple times to train the memory. In this particular case, it already did that when it did that first post. Or sorry, it didn't post because we didn't see it post, but it did a first boot and everything worked properly. So there was nothing to train again. So we can see we already have our 16 gigs of RAM. So our RAM is working just fine. Unfortunately, we don't see our CPU named off here, but we might be able to find it here in our BIOS. So here we have both our RAM sticks here. Oh wow, looks like one of them's already at 3600 megahertz and one of them is at 3333. Not a problem, we're not here to troubleshoot that. Doesn't look like I'll be able to find exactly where the CPU is listed, but I do promise you that it is the Ryzen 5 1600 AF that I initially showed you and installed into the motherboard before we got to the test boot. Well, there you have it. The RAM, the CPU, and both power supplies all tested out great. I went ahead and tested the second power supply off camera just because I didn't want to bore you guys with that. It was just test booting the system again with that second power supply. The CPU was purchased off OfferUp for $75. The RAM was purchased off Facebook Marketplace for $40. And the power supplies were purchased, at, purchased as a combo for $155. Overall, I couldn't be happier with both the deals I got and obviously the parts starting up and booting up no issues. 
that's you know always a gamble you take when you're purchasing used parts off any of the local classifieds that you find. Well, I'm gonna go ahead and end the video here. If at any point you found the video helpful or if you enjoyed the video, please hit that like button. It really does help me out. Also, if you want to see more of my videos, be sure to hit the subscribe button and also turn on notifications so you never miss another upload. I hope everyone has a great new year and a very prosperous new year at that. I really appreciate each and every one of you for watching. Thanks again and have a great day.